of Zimbabwe that people know that center in Harare that belongs to a certain group of people that um, gives us names to look up to. And she said, well, my book is about looking at others. And I was saying to her earlier, one of the things I love best about her book is that the first half is one person's vision of one story, of the same history, and then you get to hear another person's version, but it's not repeating, it's, it's moving, it's giving us more understanding, more nuance, it's you know, saying, well, this person was living this history in a male body from a particular perspective, this one is in a female body from a particular, so it's really rich in that way. And my question to you is, does shared histories create a sense of identity and belonging? Um, and Johnny, you brought that also to mind when you said, okay, we're both here and we're both from Finland. And we didn't know all this, but suddenly we're both from Finland and so we connect. It's the going out and being in an airport and hearing someone speak Swahili in a corner and they suddenly become your best friend. Yet in Nairobi, you wouldn't look at them twice, right? So do shared histories create a sense of identity, shared identity and belonging, or dot, dot, dot? Yvonne, you're to start. This is, I was in, in Cape Town a, a couple of years ago at the VMA waterfront. Uh, I was just standing, kind of looking around, and probably looking a, a bit out of place when this person of Asian origin comes over to me and says, Are you Kenyan? I said, Yes, I am. And then he hugged me. He says, These people are strange. <laughs> <laughs> We ended up having coffee and a major gossip session. <laughs> but uh, it would never happen in Nairobi. I wouldn't approach a stranger at all. Um, and there'd be, there'd be finer lines um, to cross. But in that place, and also, we suddenly, actually, at that moment, if we could have stood in a stood high stone to sing the national anthem of Kenya, we would have. <laughs> so they, these are, there's a kind of, uh, there's a, there are ways in which there are connections, but I think, like I said, coming flying back here, we never, we never called each other again when we landed in Nairobi, maybe in different ways. Um, but I don't know if there's something that happens with the geography, with the space, um, uh, that then uh, um, transmutes things. So whereas before, maybe out there, we would have found a reason to, to, to bond maybe because of our, our shared um, alienation in that space. Um, coming back home, then the other issues, the things I call the demons and the ghosts and the things and the skeletons that still lurk and rattle, um, and limit then the, the, the connection. And, yeah. Thank you. These demons that you're carrying around. So you're saying we have one home when we're out there, when we reach Kenya, we also have other homes. We all now start, and those homes may not be physical, they may be our senses of community. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, I think there is a, a way of telling stories. I, I mean, I would recognize, uh, not, a, not exactly all, not only a guy from Angola, but a guy from Luanda. That guy or her? The way he or she uh, tells a story, there is a very specific way of believing in the story you're telling, in one way. It's some sort of a upaktu, um, I don't know the word, paktu, like something that you sign, paktu. Parts. Yeah, yeah, sorry? Parts. Yeah. Um, which is the one who's telling you the story knows he's doing something magical, the one who's receiving the story knows he's doing so. Example, even in Rwanda or outside Rwanda, if you come, you arrive, and it's you know, five minutes late or whatever, just don't say, I'm sorry I'm late. This is a lack of respect for me. Mm -hmm. So I was waiting for you, I need a good story. <laughs> Your mother died. Your grandmother was flying from, I don't know where, and I know, I will understand why you were late. And just don't come with an excuse, like a very poor excuse. <laughs> It's an excuse, it has to be a good story, amuses us. <laughs> <laughs> That's the moment. I'm late. I'm sorry, I'm late. I'm sorry. You're sorry, I'm late. What's that? I'm sorry, I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> so it's then so there is the pleasure of telling a story, 
there is, for me at least, the pleasure of receiving uh, um, a story, you know? And for me, really, it's more the how, the how you tell the story, of course, and what we do with that moment, you know? Even kids know that, you know? My, my, my nephew, my nieces, they're, now they're eight, but you know, when they're younger, they would tell me, can you tell me a story? And I would tell a story. And they would say, no, a real story, not the books with dragons or whatever, a real story. And you would tell a real story. You know, yes, they were doing this. And they would say, no, a good story. <laughs> so it's demanding all the time. You know, you need to perform. And people in Rwanda, and listen, we have 8 million in Rwanda right now. They, you know, it's very embarrassing for us, the writers, because anyone can tell a story in Rwanda better than we do. <laughs> anyone. If you are a writer in Rwanda, you have to be careful. Because everyone has a better story than, than you do. Because you are a writer, you know, I have a better story. You, know. you write the story, so I read your book, but I'm going to tell you, I have something better to tell you. And then, you know, it goes on, so which, which is good. So I think it's in a way that, and the accents, it's very beautiful. That's how you recognize, you know. It's not exactly in Angola. We are so mixed in terms of ethnicities and all. I found somebody at the airport and he speaks Portuguese. I know immediately if he's from Mozambique, Cape Verde, Guinea. Portugal, Brazil, East Timor, I know, I know. Maybe I would make a mess between Mozambique and Angola. But in the second sentence, no, this guy is from Mozambique. You know, so it's beautiful also how either stories or language can help you to identify. And yes, it happens, I think it happens when you're outside of Angola, everyone knows Angola, everyone knows the Angolans in the other side. Now. <laughs> So we, by the time we finish, the last thing that you must do, Jackie, is give us a really good story for why you were two minutes. <laughs> Johnny, go on. You set yourself up. Tell us the best. Johnny, go on, go on, let me think. Uh, I don't need to think. <laughs> so I mean, your, your question is whether shared history is necessary to identification. I'd say the answer is no. Um, mostly, when there is violence, when there is animosity, it is between people who share histories. Um, so very often, I mean, almost as a rule, you know, any Holocaust you can think of in the modern world is between people who know each other very well. Um, the subject we've been talking about is the violence in South Africa. I mean, the violence in South Africa a couple of weeks ago was committed by poor people, very, very angry at the system, but they attack people who are the most approximate to them. Uh, attack people who are also marginal, people who actually shared a great deal with them. So I think that I think that shared history is no <coughs> inoculation against hatred, against anger, and it <coughs> takes something else. And to give another example, it's just to extend something that Anjaki said. Now Anjaki said, do you tell the truth to outsiders? Do you particularly tell the truth in the north? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what are they going to do with that truth? Do, can you trust them with it? So, there's been a lot of trouble in the North lately, and, and the responses in the Global South have been so interesting. You know, huge economic crisis in Portugal and other Southern Europe, this maniac coming to power in America, um, constitutional crisis in Britain. Across the Global South, I hear so often, almost a sense, almost a sense of relief. <laughs> ah, so, so there's trouble there too. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So maybe now it's safer to share some of our trouble with them, but they're also in trouble. Yeah. Um, so there's yeah. some shared history leading to, in a sense of saying, let's not tell the truth about our home to them because they'll throw stones at our home. But now if their home, we can throw stones at their home too because it's also not so perfect. So that's another, maybe slightly attenuated way, there's another way in which shared history can create a bit of um, uh, friction between people. Yeah.